What we want to see here at the end is that the horse is flexed and bent away from the movement. What we really want to do is to get that left inside hind leg to step further underneath the body. But as long as the horse is falling over his right shoulder, if you don't get the right shoulder correct, then we are not going to be able to push that inside hind leg underneath. We don't want the inside hind leg to step across and to the outside. We really want the horse to step under, under his body to encourage the um, collection. Then, you, then everybody always asks, how much should it be? Should it be on three tracks or should it be on four tracks? I like three tracks, I like four tracks. Um, I even like four tracks with 10 centimeters in between. The most important is that you decide what you need or what you want. Also, shoulder fall for a young horse is wonderful. So you can, when you come here, you just walk on and then you stop by B and keep the same angle. And now if I look from the top, he should look like he would go on a six meter circle. He should be as much bent as he is on the six meter circle. I want him to stay a bit more on the outside rein, a bit softer on the inside rein. The outside leg stays a little bit behind because that leg guards the hind legs from falling out. What we think all the time is that the hind leg goes on the track and the front leg comes to the inside of the track. So the inside rein is opening to the side and steering the front leg to the side. The outside rein is all the time regulating how much the horse is flexing and bending in the, in the neck. And you can say that if you, for instance here, you could see it with the horse there before, if, if the rider pulls on the left rein and gives too much on the right rein at the same time, then the horse only bends the neck like this. If you can keep him, you don't, or you restrict him a little more with the outside rein, in this case your right rein, <coughs> then, then you can flex him and make him loose here without him turning the head. So really without, the flexion happens only here in the pole. Only here in the pole he is going to turn his head so much that the rider can see a little bit of the inside side of the eye and nostril. Just so much to the side. And then when the horse can flex to both sides in the same way, then we can start talking about bending. The horse never will bend uh, or be supple in the bending if he is not loose in the flexion. So in that way you can say that this like big bending to the side if the horse is strong there, it doesn't really help. He has to give in in the jaw or relax in the jaw before he can bend.